everyone the authors and invited guests welcome to technical session 2b myself ayush kar and this session would be moderated by me on behalf of global knowledge research foundation it is my great pleasure to welcome you all to the 7th world conference on smart homes and systems security and sustainability world as for 2023 london uk The seventh edition of the conference is being organized in a hybrid mode. Physical event was held in London, UK, on twenty first August, twenty twenty three, and the virtual event is being held through Zoom today and tomorrow, that is twenty third and twenty fourth August, twenty twenty three. I hope you will enjoy the knowledgeable and interactive session through the day. In this session, we have six presentation. Each presenter will be given twelve minutes for the presentation. And three minutes for question and answer. On tenth minute, I will raise a gentle reminder. There is another request to all participants that you all stay connected with us till the closing remarks. If you have any query or update, then you can write it to me in the chat box. Just before we start the session, I would like to introduce you all to the chair of this session. Kak Chai is a prof uh, professor of computer science with the Department of Computer Science. Computer Science, Konkan University, Thailand. He has interned with the Cisco Networking Academy, Cisco Systems, DMAX Forums, and Bell Labs. In his research interests includes computer networking and the internet, wireless, mobile networking, and the Internet of Things, wireless sensor network, signal processing, and the security, cyber physical system, and applied intelligence system. I welcome you, sir. Uh, our next session chair is Professor Narendra Londe. He's presently working as an associate professor in the Department of Electrical Engineering of National Institute of Technology, Raipur, Chhattisgarh, India. He has fourteen year of rich experience in academics and research. He has published more than one fifty articles in recognized journals, conferences, and books. His main area of research include medical signal and image processing. Bio biomedical instrumentations, speech signal processing, biometrics, intelligent healthcare, brain computer interface, artificial intelligence, and pattern recognition. I welcome you, sir. Uh, I request both of you, if you want to introduce yourself for one minute, you are open to do so. very good afternoon everyone present here thank you for the introduction ayush uh, i do i don't think that uh, further more introduction is required from my side i first of all i heartily welcome to professor chak chai uh, hello sir are you there yeah 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 uh, go ahead and then uh, i'll follow up after you are present i mean the introductions sir, sir. Okay, from my side, things. Uh, thank you, Ayush again, and uh, thank you, Professor Narendra. I mean, who uh, we we co uh, join as the co session chair, and thank you the uh, conference, and uh, hopefully, uh, this conference will be success for the next years. And then, this is the time that uh, please go ahead and do the presentation, and we just uh, we just uh, uh, listen for the presentation. Then, thank you. Thank you, sir. Proceeding further, now I would like to start with the paper. Mr. Tony Tona to present his paper on benchmarking unsupervised keyword extraction algorithms of online Sinhalese news article. You may please start your presentation. Yeah, thank you, sir, for giving me this opportunity to present uh, to you guys, the community, my research. Second hour, I would like to share my screen. Thank you. Can you see my screen? Yes, sir. Yeah, thank you. Yeah. Thank you. Has you introduced my paper is that uh, benchmarking and supervised learning, a supervised learning keyword extraction algorithm from online Senegalese news article. 
this is the outline we will follow on during this presentation. We we'll give first of all the introduction and uh, the first point. Second, secondly, we we'll give the background and state of the heart. And the third point, we we'll give methodology and four point to we'll give evaluation and result. Finally, we conclude we we'll give a conclusion and perspective. Nowadays, the online news web seems to be the major place where people can find information or news. This is the we remark that most of the people go to this uh, social media to get the, the, the news. As you can see this uh, this graphic, you can see that the news website is among the the major place where people go to get information. And in this platform, we consider that there is a group, the, the growth of news article in the online press. And this data, most of the time, come in an unstructured form. And also, we, we notice that there is a difficulty to find a specific information among the large volume of documents and volume available online, which are generated every day and all the time. Based on that situation, we, we have we have noticed that there is a lack of tools to automate the extraction of keywords from articles. There is no opposite uh, design and automatic approach to keyword extraction. And we, it, there is no algorithm which can allow the user to extract the keyword from free news article writing in French from online Senegalese. And also, we need to also to improve the ability, the ability to find a specific information according to their needs without having to read the word news article. Based on this problem, we, we can fix his objective, general objective. We need to find a way to automate the keywords extraction with the news article content writing in French language published through different Senegalese online sites. And this global objective can be uh, breaking in specific objective. First of all, we need to propose an approach for extracting keywords from the online press, in particular in Senegalese. And also we need to present an algorithm that can allow us to extract a keyword. And finally, we need to contribute with a corpora of keywords associated with each article. Here, we need, first of all, we need to know that what is what we call here Keywords. keywords can be seen as a sequence of one or more words providing a compact representation of a document content. In extracting ex keyword extraction means that is it the process of identifying the primary concept of a document by examining the set of terms composing it. In this, in this field, there is one important notion which we call the degree of language. This, the, there is two major information we need to know about the degree of language. First one is the copies dependent. By copies dependent, it means that we need to come with the input with the label data. And in the copies independent, we need only the, the document without having any uh, labeling data. And to, to achieve this goal in the literature, there is two approach we was proposed. First one is we can uh, tackle this problem has a supervised manner or we can resolve the problem has a supervised learning task. Due to the constraint of having the label data, we use in this research, we use an supervised learning approach. In this supervised learning approach, there is also three major approach. We can use the statistical approach or graphical one. And finally, we can use also the use of deep learning approach. Here, has methodology we propose to achieve this task. We, we, we first of all collect the data from different Senegalese online press. And after collecting the data, we, we do some data processing and exploratory data analysis. And finally, in the third point, we, we do extraction, feature extraction in order to avoid noises in our data. And finally, in the fourth point, we, we make a composition of several algorithm. This methodology can be given through this chart here. We can see that in the first part here, we have the data collection step. And in the second year, we have a data processing and some making some visualization. And here, we can see that we make some data transformation or future extraction. And here, we can, we can see that we have a composite of the, our benchmarking of algorithm. You can see here 
And finally, we have the output, which is the news of the, the keywords from news articles. And doing so, we do some data analysis in order to get insight from data which of our corpus. We can see here, we can show that we can see that the most of common words are in our copies. And here we can see that there is also some future section which we, we have done. We use the, the n-gram methods in order to avoid some noises in our data. Here we can see that the top 20 most common in gram and at this side, you can see also the, the, top, the, the top 20 most common bigram. And here our question is how we can evaluate our, our approach. We, we know that keywords, people can, for, this, for the same document, people can come with different keywords. And based on this complexity of this challenge of extracting keywords, we set several metrics in order to evaluate our best algorithm. First of all, we use average number of extracted keywords and we use also the average number of matched keywords. And also we take in account time it, it took to perform to extract keywords. Since we are in the concept of online data where data is uh, growing exponentially. And also we take in account the, percent, the, the, the percentage of matched keywords and also we perform the performance score, which takes into account the average number of matches divided by how much time it took to perform the operation. In this table, you can see that the result of, of all our algorithms use it based on our metrics, which we, we, we have fixed it before. In this table, we can show that we can show that rack extractor is, is among the best algorithms among others algorithms. And his conclusion can say that with the aim to propose a new approach to keyword extraction from news articles in online press where data has an exponential growth in a time manner, the result revealed that the right extractor achieved 80% performance by the average percentage of matching keywords with an execution time approximately of 142 seconds for our copies to, to extract the top and unique keywords for individual news article. In addition, RAC demonstrate the best performance in all metrics such as average, such average keyword per document, average matching keyword per document and performance score. Has, has perspective, we plan to collect more data from various online Senegalese news website, which, which will be beneficial for improving our and supervised learning approach of keyword extraction. Another interest research direction could be to collect news data with keywords already assigned by journalists and apply a supervised learning approach, then compare the result of these two approaches and supervised and our supervised. If you have questions or suggestions, I welcome. Thank you for your attention. Now I request session chair to begin the question answer session as we have next three minutes for question and answers. Mr. Tony. Yes. Uh, yeah. Uh, this is a nice work that you have presented as it is unsupervised. Uh, it must be having some advantage over the supervised keyword extraction, right? So can yes, you yes, briefly sir. tell me to, uh, number the, uh, those advantages. Yeah, thank you, sir. Uh, as you know that, uh, thank you for your question. As you know that uh, most of the time to heavy label data is challenging in the real life. And to, to scope of this challenge, we propose an supervised learning approach. Since our data which we collected, does it don't have an assigned data for uh, keywords for our data. And also, with an supervised learning, we, we, extract data, uh, we extract keywords automatically. And also, one of the most advantage is also to, to, uh, to avoid the, the need of uh, expert, I mean, journalists to extract keywords from the 
article in this area of big data. You know, it takes some too much resource and uh, too much time. In this task, we, we, we see that this task can be automatized instead of using human resource. And this is why we propose this. Uh, right, right. Commendable research. job, I must say that. With unsupervised, your performance is reaching to 80%. That is commendable job. And yes. for such a huge data set, which is unlabeled and which is not having the facility of labeling the data, this yes. one is a good approach. Thank you so much. Yeah, yeah thank Chak you. Chai, thank sir? You. Professor Chakchai? Yeah, just uh, I have no paper to read before, okay? Just to make sure, can you just go to the UAP, I mean, contribution again? Uh, can you just emphasize why your approach is better than other techniques? Yeah, thank you. Uh, my approach is better than other techniques. First of all, I would, I, would, I would like to mention that this approach is in contrast with the traditional approach. The traditional approach used to, to extract keywords from news articles uh, by human resource. This approach comes to avoid the need of manually extract uh, keywords from news article in the air of big data, which is a challenging task. And best, the second, secondly, we propose also the, the corpora or a dictionary of keywords assigned of each article, which before does not exist. Our second contribution. And third one, we've also proposed a tool which can allow uh, the journalist to, to achieve goals in this task of extracting keywords from news article. So this is uh, those are of our contribution and also our supervisor learning also uh, covered the, the challenge of having labeling data. We know that in real life, having challenging data is, is very cost and also uh, we don't uh, usually have this situation in real life. I don't know if uh, my just to make sure that you understand me. correctly. So basically, in your contribution is to build a tool, right? And basically yes. apply the existing supervised uh, algorithm to extract the keyword. Am I correct? Yes, sir, exactly. Ah, I see. So in I think uh, just uh, for the suggestions, I think in, in the future, you can basically propose the new algorithms, right? No, but uh, to say automatic approach. I mean, is it a new approach or is it that there's a exiting approach? Yeah, is it a new approach? Because it doesn't exist before, no? Yeah, as you can see that here, we propose our approach well, does it exist? Is it our, our own approach? During in this in this graphic, you can see that this app we, the approach we propose it to extract keywords from a, a news article. This is our our approach we propose. Okay, I think uh, okay yeah. to go beyond this. I mean, uh, paper. I think you can uh, even uh, propose the new algorithm or new feature extraction method, right? So that can yes. make your your. Uh, uh, contribution even uh, higher and maybe can submit uh, to the journals. Okay, and yeah. just a quick question. So, so, but what about any other exiting approach? Why they are not good? I mean, compared to this particularly? Yeah, uh, in the literature, as you said, in our approach, this is because we take in account several algorithms, you know, in order, as you know, that is it a, 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 a supervisor learning? Is it a, a learning task automatically uh, extracting keyword? Our post is take in account several algorithms. I mean, seven algorithms, and okay. build yeah, build a function which can auto automatically uh, come up with the best algorithm. You know, most of the time people use only one article, one algorithm, but our approach is taking in account several algorithms and after learning task and we come up with a best algorithm. Has in our case, is it a rack extra rack algorithm, which is the best algorithm. 
you know. So maybe just one last questions. When you have the the keywords from each extractor, how to merge or how to select the best among other? I mean, uh, say uh, one, two, three, four, uh, six or uh, six or seven algorithm. Yeah. yeah. How to select? I mean, what is what is your your technique to select the the, the best keywords among others uh, algorithm? Yeah, how to select the best uh, keyword extractor? Is it based on our metrics? We need to compare of average number of extracted keywords, and based on this metric, we can select the best uh, keywords. Based on this metric, we define it. Yeah. Okay. But but I think yeah. you I think this you can improve the uh, uh, beyond these five samples. Uh, uh, you can give a weight among the the best keyword of each algorithm, and then you can yeah. get uh, maybe uh, different weights. Uh, then we can get the proper uh, keyword. Okay, I think that's yes, good. Uh, thank you very much. Yeah, you're welcome. Thank you for your your contribution also. Moving forward, now I would like to call Oluwa Sey to present his paper on Decentral Vote, a scalable decentralized e-voting software system using IPFS as a storage mechanism. You may please start your presentation. Now share my screen. You see my screen? Yes. Perfect. All right. All right. Um, thank you, everyone, for um, giving me a, the opportunity to present to you today. My name is Olua Shea, Shea for short. And today I am going to be presenting to you uh, Decenter Vote, a uh, decentralized e voting uh, system. A decentralized, uh, a scalable decentralized e voting software system using the IPFS, uh, which is interplanetary file system as a storage mechanism. Okay, let's get started. So, the outline of uh, my presentation, we're going to have the introduction, which uh, essentially introduces you to, to uh, the overview of the system and background, uh, the essential work we're doing, motivation, problem statements. And then we're going to move out to the background and related work, which uh, contains like um, technical background and other related work that has been done in this uh, field of work. And then we're going to go ahead to the system design of the prototype and implementation of the prototype. And then we're going to go ahead and look at the evaluation of the system. And then finally, we're going to look at the conclusion um, of, of, the, of this work. So let's get started. So introduction, uh, so the motivation behind this work um, is uh, to essentially in, uh, invent uh, a way, innovative way to be able to um, do decentralized e-voting, electronic voting. Um, so in 2017, uh, Mick Corey and, uh, and other presenters uh, invented a decentralized autonomous internet voting protocol using Ethereum, um, blockchain smart contracts. This uh, was a good uh, innovation um, and it was actually decentralized because uh, it would uh, theoretically distribute the responsibilities of uh, e-voting among uh, uh, multiple entities using threshold cryptography. Um, this means that a lot, a bunch of people would be able to decrypt the votes um together uh, without an individual being able to do so without a uh, co collective coordination so this is what is called also called a self talent protocol and it all offers a bunch of uh, advantages such as uh voter secrecy and um ballot secrecy voter uh, voter privacy and and such however this is uh not a scalable system because it uses ethereum obviously 
it, first of all, it's super expensive to do such in terms of resources. Um, so the my innovation um, aims to solve this problem using decentralization, which is a, a, a term um, that describes distribute, distributing equal control to each participant in a system um, to build and implement a secure, trustworthy e-voting system. Um, so with decentralization, there's also scalability in terms of uh, DevOps and all that stuff. So we have um, implemented this into the central vote uh, to create a prototype. So we're going to be going through that. So background, the technical background. What is decentralization? I previously mentioned uh, it describes a system where no centralized authority controls uh, and the process into the system. Uh, this means that, um, like, a, uh, this means that a bunch of uh, decisions on a higher level would be distributed amongst the participant of the system. Um, decentralization, a decentralized system. Uh, is a distributed system, but a distributed system is not necessarily decentralized. This means that um, in a distributed system, you could have uh, one source of control. Meanwhile, a decentralized system, everyone sort of like has uh, the ability to control and make decisions. So in the technological context, uh, information on focusing on information technology, IT, Decentralization can be seen as a structure where individual entities in a subgroup, um, they trust each other and all the group members contribute to the group's common goals. Um, yep, so as you can see, this is a, an illustration, a simple illustration of centralization where you have hierarchical structures. Number one is the bus of two, three, and four, and then also the bus of uh, five, six, seven, eight, nine, and 10. And then you see you know, two is a bus of five and six. Um, so five and six report to two, seven and eight report to three, nine and 10 report to four, and they all report to one, which is the leader. In a decentralized system, everyone has equal control and uh, they're all participant in the system. That's uh, it right there. Um, yep. <clears throat> so moving on, we have the blockchain technology uh, and Ethereum blockchain. So blockchain is a fundamental technology on which Ethereum was built, and it was useful because um, allowed uh, it allowed uh, smart contracts to be created. Um, you know this, so we can move on. Um, so a simple blockchain illustration. This is it. Now IPFS. IPFS is a interplanetary file system, a platform which was introduced by Bennett uh, in 2014. Um, IPFS is a, uh, solved the problems associated with data distribution and decentralization. So it's a platform where a decentralized network of computers uh, holds shards of data, um, and it was implemented using distributed S table, specifically Kadmila, and uh, you know get the Git system is similar to BitTorrent. These are the foundational technologies on which IPFS was built on top of. E-voting, end-to-end uh, -end encrypt encrypted uh, voting systems. So end-to-end -end encrypted voting systems describe a mode of communication between two participating channels where um, only uh, the two participants can read the informa communicated information. A middle man cannot. Um, so there are different features that uh, that are offered by the E2E uh, end to end encrypted e voting systems. Uh, we have voter privacy, uh, voter verifiability, uh, eligibility ver ver verifiability, accountability, robustness, and usability and accessibility. Now, the major ones that we're going to be focusing on in uh, a prototype is the vote privacy, verifiability, uh, and those are the major two. Okay, so voter privacy deals with uh, the ballot secrecy, receipt for free voting, and coercion res resistance. So receipt free voting just means that 
Um, a voting system must not provide the voter with a method that can be used to prove to another entity how they have cast their ballot. So meaning that I, as Shay, cannot go ahead and vote and I should be given a way to prove to another voter that, oh, I have voted for this person. So, and the reason for that is to uh, pre prevent, you know, voter coercion and bribery. Um, so that's one of the features of of, of E2E voting system of voter privacy. Um, uh, and coercion resistance just means that uh, votes should be casted by voters for their intended choice regardless of their co cooperation with vote uh, coercer, which means that they should still be able to vote uh, regardless if they have coerced with uh, uh, a bad entity. So ballot security, the secrecy guarantees that a voting system would never be exposed in terms of like their the voter's identity and linking their name to a specific ballot. Um, so this means that uh, on a receipt, it's similar to receipt freeness, but it means that in any way, shape, or form, my ballot should not be linked to my identity, uh, so that um, I so that I can be attached to a specific vote cast. So verifiability, this means uh, that we, at, we need to have a way to verify that I voted. Um, I, as an individual, need to have a way that uh, to verify that I voted. The system has registered my vote the way I voted. And then to also prove to the public that um, my votes have been counted properly. So in this first case, you can think of it as an individual going to the poll and voting person A, where you have option A's and B's, uh, it, options A and B, where I vote for A, and uh, I'm able to verify that the system has registered my vote as voting for A properly, and then the public can read that, oh, that me voting for A has been tallied properly at the end of the, at the end of the voting session, so verifiability comes there. So moving on to related work, uh, blockchain E, end-to-end -end encrypted Verifiable systems. Ethereum is one, um, which essentially is the open vote network. Uh, Follow my vote, Bit Congress. They they've been invented, but they all essentially have the same problem, which is the problem of scalability. Um, they are an Ethereum network, which uses a lot of resources, not really scalable. Um, as you can see, like the systems cannot support more than sixty voters. Now, this is a matrix that shows the properties offered by um, the central vote, centralized e-voting systems, and open vote network. As you can see, storage mechanism is the centralized, the centralized uh, storage mechanism. This is not this is not offered. Open vote network is decentralized. The central vote our prototype is decentralized. Automated tallying is offered by a centralized network, but not offered by open vote network and the central vote. Voter privacy all offered by all three, all three, all three, all three. So as you can see, it's just a matrix comparing all three systems. Um, so as you can see, this is the open vote network and this is how it works. You have a voter admin entity, uh, an admin entity and an observer entity, and they can all use this common interface to look at the live feed, the admin as its, its own, is our own page, and then there's a vote page for the voter. And then this interacts with the open net vote network DAO, uh, decentralized application. Um, and this is where the logic application layer is. And then this is uh, written and read by the blockchain server. So the smart contract essentially writes this, reads from and writes to the uh, smart, smart contract. Um, and then this is a traditional voting <laughs> traditional distributor voting system, uh, which is centralized. You can see one server is controlling a bunch of local databases and those databases are um, are uh, connected to each voting centers. We have an audit system on the server and then there's a tallying, uh, tallying there's a server that essentially tallies the results of the vote. So this is sort of a centralized distributed e-voting system. Now, uh, system design and implementation of the decentral vote. Yep. I apologize for the interruption, but would you kindly consider concluding your presentation as we have only two minutes remaining? Oh yeah, definitely. So, um, 
this is a use these are the use cases of the system you have the election admin and the system admin and we have the voter and the observer so system architecture this is eye level you have the rabbit mq voter and uh rabbit mq server and then you have the application layer persistent to the ipfs network um yeah that's basically how the system works the rest uh it's not that um, important information. But yes, I'm going to take questions now. Thank you. I request session chair to kindly begin the question of the session. Hey, let me ask some questions since this is, uh, the time is not. Is short, so uh, I think you uh, uh, you develop the the e voting system, right? Can you go back yes, to sir. the the comparisons uh, works? Okay. You show me the tables uh, compared mm -hmm. with uh, center sure. line and something, right? Yep. Uh, yeah, just to make sure you propose the decent throw board, right? Yes, sir. I see. So then I I assume that you have to beat the open world, but now you said that uh, you cannot. Why you cannot do the automate automate toll, uh, two questions? The first question is why you believe your approach is cost effective compared to the open world. The second question is why you cannot do the automate tolling. Okay. Thank you for those questions. So the first question, uh, the cost effectiveness over the open vote is really good because um, open vote is harder to scale, right? And more expensive. As I showed you and mentioned, um, open vote can only support about 60 voters in total. Um, so that beats it in, in that aspect. It's not scalable and it's not feasible in terms of cost. Um, imagine you uh, doing like a old city or a, a million people in a state, for example, um, an open vote would be impossible, you know, because it's on Ethereum network. Now for the second question, which is uh, automated talent, it's a feature that I just haven't added to the prototype. It's a possible uh, future work that could be added into the system. Definitely. So, but currently doesn't add it. That's why. Thank you. one more quick question so so can you go to the performance uh, comparisons so what sure. metric that you use to do the performance test so for the performance test i have uh i use j meter um so j meter and uh i was able to do uh what's it called i was able to use j meter and uh Essentially, the request per minute, the throughput, as you can see, uh, is 73 per uh, per minute with, with uh, processing 805 samples of work, um, 805,000 samples of work, which means that uh, a thousand, a thousand uh, ballot requests, meaning that if people put a ballot request, uh, and you're you're doing a thousand per minute. A thousand would take a uh, thirteen thirteen minutes to process. Um, for for my little system on my little system, so it's a really good uh performance. Uh, considering that my uh I'm using a computer, a laptop, which is multi-threaded, running a, a three servers at once. Um, so that's how I did the performance testing using JMeter. It's a Java application. So JMeter was the best, uh, the best uh, tool to use for the endpoint testing. So that's what I did. Thank you, uh, please, Professor Narenda. And if you have any questions, so here we can move to the next presentation. Maybe I is busy there. Now oh, let's proceed to the next presentation of this conference. I would like to welcome Monica to present her paper on effects of control design on heal and selectivity for the oxid oxidation of o xylene to 
salic acid and hydride carried out in a tabular type reactor. Give me please start your presentation. Yes. Uh... Um, everybody could see the presentation. Yes, ma'am, your screen, screen is visible. Thank you. Hello, ladies and gentlemen. The context of my presentation will be introduction, justification, methodology, control design, results, and conclusions. And to the reactors are equipment of wide interest in the industry and for the high efficiency and easy maintenance. Um, among the multiple reactions that could be carried out in a tubular type reactor, there are the multiple consecutive reactions whose transformation can involve in a desired products, but also undesired products. Selectivity and yield are two important parameters uh, for multiple consecutive reactions because they determine the efficiency uh, of the conversion of the reactants into the desired products and also the, the the quality of the desired product. Uh, what means selectivity? Uh, selectivity means that the reactor produces a high quality of the desired product, uh, minimizing the formation of undesired products. On the other hand, yield refers to the efficiency in which uh, chemical reactions convert reactants into products. In order to enjoy a safer and better quality process, it's necessary the implementation of control system because we know that in real life, any equipment operate in an ideal way. So um, a cascade control system is a control strategy that uh, interconnect multiple logs uh, to regulate a process or a variable of the, of the process. And a cascade control is formed by uh, the main control loop that is called the master loop, uh, which adjusts a control uh, with, with adjust the principal or the main variable of the process, and also is formed by uh, the secondary loop, which adjusts a secondary variable of the process and is uh, called a slave loop. Numerous investigations have been focused on. Uh, control system in multiple reactions carried in tubular reactors. However, there is not much information on how control system affect the selectivity and yield of the multiple uh, consecutive reactions. Uh, selectivity and yield are important because it helps us to know how, how was the efficiency of the conversion and how quantity and quality of the desired products were obtained. The methodology following this paper is the next. The reaction work is it was the uh, oxidation of orthosilane to phthalic anhydride. This reaction is carried out in a tubular type reactor. The length of the reactor was uh, four meters. Uh, for the model solution, we have four equations, the heat and, and mass equations. And the discretization of these model equations is done using the central finite difference method. And uh, we need to integrate this set of equations. And this is done by the four uh, order root kuta methods. For the characterization of the process, uh, we apply a uh, step change in the temperature of the jacket. This uh, step change was of the less, by less 20% um, of the temperature of the jacket. With this uh, char characterization, uh, we, by applying the step change, we have we uh, made an approximation to a model. Uh, the model is uh, a first order plus the time uh, model, uh, and then uh, this model helps us to tune the control system, follow the rules of Schoenstatt and Greenhull. Uh, we select three measurement measurement points along the reactor uh, follow the words of Urrea, which uh, say that the more unstable uh, measurement points was at the inlet, at the outlet, and on the hotspot. Uh, so uh, the three measurement points selected was at 10% uh, of the reactor lead, at 50%, and the 90% of the reactor lead, which was four uh, meters. 
In this graphic, we can uh, see the temperature profile uh, of the reactor and uh, the, the first measurement point is positioned close to the hot spot and the hot spot is the high level of temperature. Um, and the, the other uh, blue lines are the other two measurement points selected to test the control system. Uh, the control system selected was a cascade control that is formed by the primary control. The primary control relates the composition of the reactor and the temperature of the reactor. And the secondary control relates the temperature of the reactor and the temperature of the uh, jacket. Uh, the principal pur purpose of this control is uh, keep the composition of the de on the desired set point. And um, uh, well, uh, this the secondary control is a proportional control, and the primary control is a proportional integral control. Uh, we decided to uh, use a cascade control system because we have uh, the composition, which is a variable that is not easy to be measured in no time. So uh, it's it's necessary. Um, secondary variable uh, to have a secondary variable which is the temperature of the jacket and this temperature of the jacket is the variable to manipulate to have this influence in the composition and um, through the manipulation on the temperature of the jacket we can have this influence influ influence in the composition and keep the composition on the desired set point uh, the control system was uh, tested with two disturbances. The first disturbance in the 10% in the input uh, ortho silane composition, and the second disturbance in the 10% on the fluid feed temperature. Both disturbance was applied at uh, 200 seconds. Uh, this graphic shows the molar flow response. The first graphic shows the uh, response of the com composition through uh, the disturbance of 10% in the orthocylene composition. The lines shows the response of the three measurement points selected. And the second graphic shows the response of the, also the molar flow, but uh, uh, by the plane of the disturbance in the 10% uh, of the fit temperature. As we can see, the molar flow response uh, is good because the composition uh, keep uh, stable after applying the disturbance. Also, for the response of the jacket temperature is successful uh, because the first graphic shows the response of the temperature of the jacket in at the disturbance at the ten percent of the orthocylene concentration, and the second graphic shows the response of the uh, also the temperature of the jacket, but at 10% disturbance in the fit temperature. So uh, we can see that the, the jacket temperature keep uh, stable. Uh, also the response, the, these are the response of the three measurement points. On the second graphic, we can see uh, this little difference, is called offset, but this is um, a phenomenon that happened uh, because of the application of the proportional contour but it's a minimum difference. So uh, also the jacket temperature is, the response of the jacket temperature is good. Uh, for selectivity, uh, we evaluate the selectivity uh, with the disturbance of the 10% and the ortho composition. And the second graphic shows the disturbance of the, the disturbance in the fit temperature, also in uh, the 10% disturbance. Uh, the response of selectivity are uh, good. Uh, we can see that uh, the percentage of selectivity increase um, after applying the disturbance, which means that we are obtaining a high percent of the desired products in comparison with the undesired products. For the response in uh, G, uh, the first graphic shows uh, the response of uh, after applying the 10% disturbance in the orthocylene concentration. And the second graphic shows the response of the yield to a disturbance in the fit temperature, also for the three measurement points select. Uh, we can see that in the first graphic, uh, 
decrease the percentage of the of yield, and in the second graphic, increase the percentage of the yield, which means that um, I, with a disturbance in the concentration, we uh, obtain less percent or uh, less percent of the conversion of the reactants into the product in comparison with a disturbance in the feed temperature that we obtain a higher level of a uh, conversion of the reactants into the products. Uh, well, in conclusion, um, the main purpose of this work was uh, to test if the control system uh, is affected by selectivity and yield, and the, the answer is uh, yes. Selectivity and yield are affected by the control system. Um, the values obtained for selectivity were increased by applying the control structure and being evaluated again a disturbance in the in the composition and the values of the gene increase by applying the disturbance in the feed temperature. Also, these values were compared with uh, other words, and we obtained that the well, the values of selectivity and gene obtained were, were good in comparison with other uh, words. And also, the response of the disturbance and or the response of the control system to the disturbance was successful um, due to the temperature of the of the jacket and the composition keep uh, stable against induce this disturbance. And well, this is uh, my bibliographic reference. And thank you so much for your attention. Attention. I request session chair to begin the question answer session for next two minutes. Uh, um, presenter, I have a question here. How your yes. this control design is better than the conventional control designs that we use, like P, PI, and then PID controllers? Can you briefly tell me this? It, sorry, it, can you repeat me the question? I have a lack of a little lack of internet. I'm asking that how your this control design is better than the conventional one like P, PI, and PID control. Uh, how I select the, the this uh, control system? Yes, yes. Oh, because. Uh, uh, in the process, we have the two variables, the, the composition and the temperature. Uh, so um, it's, well, the, the purpose was control the composition uh, because it's necessary for the process that is carried in a reactor, but composition um, is difficult to, to be measured in no time. So we need a variable that can, um, uh, that can regulate, uh, that can be manipulated. And with this manipulation, we have the, um, this, uh, well, by manipulation, the, the, this variable that is the temperature of the jacket, we have this uh, effect on the composition. So uh, that's why we select a cascade control uh, structure uh, that help that, um, give us the, that um, uh, possibility of have this response on the composition by the manipulation of the of a secondary variable to be uh, more easy. And then we select a proportional uh, control because this control makes us to approach to the desired set point. And then we, we select a proportional integral system because this uh, kind of control uh, help us to uh, uh, minimize the the little error that uh, we have by the applying of the proportional because the proportional control uh, introduced a phenomenon called offset which is a little uh, error and with the proportional integral control we minimize the this error so we have uh, a more uh, occurrently control system.
right right thank you thank you so much uh, thank you Professor for your Chichan. questions okay uh, mm, i just have a quick question so i'm not uh, that familiar with this area anyway so can, can you uh elaborate a bit what is what did you get what is the new finding uh, or even what is the new approach or even the novelty of this uh, work yes uh, well uh, we have a uh, numerous uh, words or articles that focus on the desire design of control system in multiple uh, consecutive reactions in tubular reactors but a uh, it's really difficult to find uh, some words that uh, that uh, give us the information of how control structures affect the selectivity and yield of the multiple consecutive reactions, because uh, selectivity and yield uh, mentions the the efficiency of the conversions of the reaction. Uh, I mean, if we are obtained a good uh, percentage of the desired set point. So uh, the principal uh, find is that we uh, we say if the control system has effect on on the selectivity and yield has this effect of or see if increase or decrease the conversions of the percentage. Or the quantity of the products that we we desire for the process, and the answer was yes. Uh, control structures uh, could increase or could decrease the the amount of uh, of the desired pro, uh, products for the process. Okay, just my suggestion because I don't have your paper, right? So maybe better to, to elaborate elaborate a bit about the your key uh, new finding or uh, even the do the performance uh, performance measurements then we i mean uh, can you uh, maybe it can uh, make the uh, the paper clear okay uh, to me thank yes. you no more questions thank you now proceeding further i would like to call the next next presenter that is garcia rojas isai present his paper on evolution of sensitivity and yield in the design of control system for the production of malic and hydride carried out in tabular reactor. Can you see the presentation? Yes. Yes, ah, okay. Mm. Okay. Uh, hello, uh, ladies and gentlemen, and the tech for the presentation. The content is following uh, introduction, classification, methodology, result, and conclusion uh, for the chemical reactor. Uh, the chemical reactor are usually the hair of the chemical process, as this is where the chemical reaction takes place and the desired chemicals are produced. Um, the chemical engineer mold determinate the best operating condition uh, to optimize the product. So for the automatic control, the objective of the automatic control is to regulate uh, the process variables and increase the operational reliability. Uh, the control configuration based on the temperature measurement uh, has been uh, developed into overcome, overcome drawbacks of the concentration measuring delay. The selectivity and gel, uh, we think in parallel reaction, uh, the selectivity and gel uh, always considering because the selectivity refers uh, to ability of the chemical reaction to produce the desired product uh, rather than other size product. Uh, the gel, on the other hand, refers to uh, amount of final product obtaining a relation to the amount of the reactant usage. So for the classification, uh, the reaction on the product, the anhydric malicot, is uh, very common. Uh, or implement uh, two temperature mentions to the cascade control structure located before and after of the hotspot uh, was analyzed. 
Petri can carry uh, the survey of the simulation about the, the synthesis in the malignant android for only in the polymath. So Muller uh, review a critical discussion the current state of the, the button to an um, malignant android interaction model. The objective uh, is so a student to analyze the effect of the control structure in the parallel reaction, specifically in the in the production of malignant anhydride in a tubular reactor on the selectivity and gel. So the methodology uh, selecting the case of the study is the the reaction, the, the parallel reaction at the bottom uh, to anhydride molecule. So the num uh, numerical solving parameter model uh, need to find the feeling, the final element, the Rukenkuta method, and the modificate the other. So for the process characterization, uh, a step was for the 5% uh, was made in a jacket temperature. The next, and the controller design, the controller design was a tuning method of the EMS control for Scogestat. And final evaluation control based on selectivity and gel criteria. Uh, and this uh, illustrates the reactor characters control scheme for a reactor tubular. Uh, for the simple uh, is the to analyze in the final concentration and to the regulate about the the temperature in the uh, inside of the reactor tubular. So has a two to control, the primary control and the secondary control. The primary control uh, relates to a uh, final control and the temperature. So the secondary control only modifies the temperature of jacket for the temperature of jacket is the variable or to manipulate in the reactor control. As a result, uh, has uh, the profile of the malachy anhydric and the butane. So the anhydric malachy obtain uh, zero to twenty five percent in the mole of, of concentration. This is the profile of the reactor in the temperature. You see or uh, show uh, more has a hot spot in the reactor leg, uh, like uh, um, uh, 70, uh, zero foot, zero pine, 70 meters. Uh, we need to maintain uh, the, this control. So uh, select it, the three points in this case, the C10, C20, and the C30. These are the points to maintaining of the control. The principal is the hot spot because it's in the no, it's a good point. <laughs> so then so the response on the concentration and the temperature jacket. You see is the response of the concentration only at the point in the three point. So uh, in this study has a uh, to different disturbance, disturbance in the concentration phase and in the temperate phase, all is in the disturbance in the concentration. Uh, the other uh, response is in the disturbance in the temperature uh, field. The response is very different because the oscillation is, is other, is uh, the big oscillation. So the important of the, this study is to um, observe the, the gel and, and the selectivity. You see the the gel, uh, the J percent increase when uh, disturbance in the concentration. In the other is like a little decrease in the disturbance on the temperature field. The selectivity maintaining the same. No, it's the same. No, has a. Uh, only of the oscillation, but the control maintaining. But in the disturbance in the temperature, a uh, decrease, decrease the, the selectivity. It's a little, but the control affected. Uh, these are the values of the, the gel and the selectivity. 
And so uh, with other studies, the sick chin uh, obtaining uh, 36 and the petri uh, 85, 87, sorry. But in the petri only uh, the simulation in the polymer, so the the balance or the composition is very is very simple. So the chin has other other uh, other simulations. So the the gel is like uh, too similar, no? And the selectivity uh, is a is a big uh, selectivity. But in the petri, the the selective percent is yeah, it's, it's too similar. But uh, the difference is because uh, the temperature. If you modify the temperature, the the gel and the selectivity decrease in the battery. In this, the the control maintain to the the gel the selectivity will decrease with the disturbance. So the conclusion is like a, it was observed that the control this had affected on the control secondary and the control lobe affected the selectivity and gel. And uh, it was observed that uh, regardless of the position of the reactor is affecting in the same way. This finds again that the control structure is a critical factor in the molecular analytic production and can have a positive or negative effect in the aspect. So thank you for paying attention. Request session chair to begin the question answer session. Yes, hello, Mr. Rogers. Can you hear me? Yes, can you hear you, Mr. Rogers? Yes. Yes. Yeah. Uh, the control design that you are uh, talking about, you are saying that it will have positive and negative both effects. Okay. Is this not analyzed by the in the, during the experiment of yours? Uh, yes, I am. I say three points in the. Uh, profile of the temperature. Um, can you see the, the illustration yes. of the profile? Yeah, analyze uh, three points in the the hot spot uh, before and after of the on the reactor. How is the, the, the how is uh -huh. the uh, permissible range of uh, reactor length? Permissible reactor length. What is how much is the permissible reactor length? Uh, the reactor length is at seven meters. Seven meters. Okay. Uh -huh. Yeah, it's uh, yeah. Such Thank a you. Yeah. Thanks. Okay, uh, can you go to the your uh, comparisons itself? Just have a quick look and some something is missing. To my mind, can you go to the your performance? Yes. Is there the deal and the sensitivity is something, but other there is no uh, report. Can you go to the next slide? Uh, uh, Do you see about the comparison of the other authors? Yeah, yeah, or... yeah, 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 yeah. Ah, okay, yeah. Yeah, just yeah. confuse. Uh, I okay. think you just do the, the evaluation of the yield and sensitivity, right? But then you said you compare with the uh, Chin and uh, Patrick. Why the yield and sensitivity is so different? Ah, okay, it's very different because the Patrick and Carrick use the polymer. Polymer is uh, like a basic programming for, uh, for, uh, um, for a reactor synthetic. Is um, how to say, it's like it's like you use it in the in the school, like it's very basic the the program. 
So only introduce uh, only one uh only one equation and the equation is basically no no considered other other things like, like uh, the how to say um, the the molar bands or the energy. So in the in section I consider a uh, uh, more things the 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 balance and the energy. So can can I say that the the you, the model is not I mean fair comparisons, uh, right? The design is different, huh? Yeah, it's it's a little different because this study is no uh in the how say the, the article no is uh no is very common to use uh, the control or use the the button for the anhydric malate. Maybe it's more common the benzene for produce for producing. Okay, but, but this this value you you just uh uh grab from that paper right not uh, reproduce the uh, uh, that design here thirty six or eighty seven or something so you just grab from that paper or you just reproduce the the evaluation based on that design yeah um yeah the the jelly is it's high because maybe it's uh well, report this this value, but maybe it's a, I don't know a, a aerosol side of the school. Mm -hmm. I don't know, but a report the the values and report the the selectivity, but the equation no, it's very different. Okay, I think that I think it's better to just discuss the the results of the three. Okay, so no more question for me. Thank you. Can you just move to the next presenter? Okay, sir. So moving forward, now I would like to call Vadim uh, to present his paper on functioning of the uh, tax administration ecosystem, problems and prospects affecting the implementation of the development task for the Russian economy under sanctions. Moving forward, uh, moving towards the last presentation, uh, now I would like to call Zenev to present her paper on modeling a new approach quality 4.0 using deep learning. Uh, hello, please, you can, uh, okay, it's, it's okay. I don't know if you uh, if you see my my presentation. Yes, ma'am. We can see your presentation. Okay, I can start. Oops, sorry. Uh, hello, I'm uh, Zainab Zubaydi, uh, an industrial uh, engineer and a PhD student at uh, Sidi Mohammed uh, bin Abdullah University in Morocco. I'm truly honored to be among you today to present my research work on the topic of uh, modeling new approach to quality 4.0 using deep learning, which is prepared by uh, Mr. Uh, Mr. Uh, Mr. Brahim Haru, Mr. Suhail Saqad, Mr. Hassan Khadari, and Mrs. Sahar Habedi. We're gonna, uh, we're gonna start. Sorry. I'm going to continue. Uh, our table of components, we're going to start with the introduction. 
after the we're gonna uh, we're gonna try to oh, talk about the quality 4.0 uh, thirdly, uh, industrial classical approaches, and we're going to talk about our problematic and we're going to study uh, a case of uh, industrial uh, problems. Then we we talk about the neural network construction and finally we, uh, we finish with the conclusion. Uh, the, call, the quality 4.0 refers to the application of advanced artificial intelligence technologies in the domain of quality. It brings significant, uh, significant advantages in terms of efficiency, flexibility, prediction failure, customer satisfaction, and data-driven decision-making, based on real-time data collected from sensors installed on production lines. Quality 4.0 is to achieve detect-free production by anticipating and preventing quality failures before they occur through uh, the continuous data collected. This helps to provide a better understanding of process, identify, identify a root cause of problem and implement appropriate uh, corrective actions. This article focuses on development of a new quality 4.0 model that aims to propose an intelligent quality control system by adapting deep learning methods. Uh, the ISO 901 standard is the most well-known quality management system standard. Uh, as according to this standard, uh, is, the quality is defined as the totality of features and characteristics of products or service that make it able to satisfy sets or implied needs. As we know that the that the performance triangle plays a uh, crucial role in the business management, aiming to optimize its various activities in terms of quality, cost, and time. The interaction among these different stakeholders creates added value for the companies. They help uh, the companies to prevent all of defects and breakdowns, also uh, decrease the cost of non-quality, uh, reduce various source of waste on production uh, lines, such as uh, the moda, the mori, and the moral. Also, they help to uh, it helps to improve uh, performance indicators of production line. Industrial states it will uh, use certain methods that we call the classical industri uh, industrial method to optimize their performances. This classical industrial refers to the traditional approach used in the field of industry for operations management, production, and process improvement. There are some examples of uh, classical methods, such as uh, quality management, uh, like uh, statistical quality control, sampling quality control, and visual, uh, visual inspection. Also, we have the, uh, the continuous improvement uh, like the lean manufacturing, the Six Sigma, the total productive uh, menus. This method aims to identify and eliminate waste, defects, and inefficiency while promoting a culture of continuous improvement within the organization. The, in our problem, uh, problematic, the classical, uh, as we know that the classical industrial methods are primarily based either on the real-time detection concepts or on the advanced prediction concepts. In this prism, uh, presentation, we specifically focus on the quality management. The process of, uh, of identifying uh, the, root the root causes of a problem in the quality management requires human in, in industry with, uh, in general and specifically in the quality management requires a human intervention. In this article, we propose the development of an intelligent model that predicts products failures uh, based on historic uh, historical uh, data stored in the archive. The pro this proposal will study the relationship and the correlation between the most frequent failures and their main causes, and it will it will it will train the machine to react intelligently to problems. We gonna in our study we gonna follow the these steps. 
uh, firstly, collection uh, past occurrences of defects and their root causes from recorded history. Then we're gonna build an intelligent our intelligent system for defects prediction by adapting specific more uh, the neural network me method. And uh, after this uh, this step, the, uh, the system will uh, will learn how to how to start how to. Uh, how to warn the employees about the potential defects uh, before they occur. Uh, in this case study, uh, we study, we're gonna study the case of the cardboard compactor that is used to reduce the volume of cardboard and shape it into balls, which are autom automatically attached with the roller. We're gonna find in the figure number three, the, the, the hydraulic schematic of the compacting Press. And in the figure number four, uh, the, the hydraulic schema, the sorry, the less of components press components. Okay, so uh, like we just uh, mentioned, the study will be focused on finding a correlation model between failures, defects, and their causes in order to learn this, to the system how it should react to this problem. That will cause non-quality problems. So after a deep study to the history historical failures and the, of the cardboard compactor, we have identified four frequent failures. The oversight bales, uh, which means the dimensions of the bell exceed the required dimensions. Uh, secondly, uh, the other the undersized bales, uh, which means the dimension of the bales are smaller than the required dimensions. Uh, number three, the no descent of the blood, and number four is no defects. When we have no defects and it uh, and all the production is good. On the other hand, the uh, the research on the history of defects has allowed us to define the different characteristics that have been identified as a cause of the observed uh, failures. Uh, we gonna we we found uh, twenty three causes. Uh, like uh, leaks in the pumps, leaks in the pipeline, dirty section filter. No, uh, then we pass to the neural network model construction. Arti as, as we know, that's the artificial neural network are method invented in the context of artificial intelligence, through which we uh, simulate human intelligence. Neural network model starts with uh, when we 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 want to to the to construct our to or to build our neural network. We gonna we sh we should to follow this step. Firstly, uh, the problem definition. In our uh, in our problem, we developed a fault uh, a failure prediction model using neural network using the historic uh, the historical data of uh, different failures that occurred on the compaction machine. Uh, step number two is the data collection and preparation. In our case, we use the Pareto diagram uh, to identify the four most frequent failure type on the compaction ma machine, and uh, we and we and use the root cause identification method to define the the cause of each uh, failure. Number three, step number three is the neural is the network architecture design. In this article, we work with the feed-forward networks, uh, three hidden layers with the uh, 15 neurons in the, each uh, in, in each in, uh, in the hidden in the layers. The input layers consist of uh, 23 neurons corresponding uh, to 23 causes. The output layer consists of uh, four neurons, which uh, which correspond in the, on the, the four types of failure. Uh, the four, uh, sorry, the four, the, the four word propagation, we use the activation uh, function, function as the sigmoid and, and the review. Uh, the step number three, number four, is the initialization. Okay. In, I apologize for the interruption, but would you kindly consider concluding your presentation as we have only two minutes left. Uh, sorry, I didn't hear you well. Uh, actually, I'm saying uh, you have only two minutes left. I'll conclude ah, okay. your presentation. 
Uh, it's okay, Doc. Oh, it's okay, it's okay. Uh, I'm gonna pass. We use the, the, the stochastic gradient descent, the gradient descent with momentum, and the RMS probe algorithm and finally the atom optimize, uh, optimizer we show this uh, this results we can found in the for the first model is we gonna follow, we found the three uh, times 10 uh, squared minus two uh, if you see that's the 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 final the fourth model which developed with the atom optimization is the is the more uh, accurate uh, is the most accurate model developed. Okay, for the conclusion, uh, in this article, we use the neural network model in the context of uh, quality 4.0 in order to protect different types of failure and defects on products. The utilization of neural networks for failure protection is a highly valuable and potent strategy across diverse uh, industry. And thank you for your attention. I request session chair to kindly begin the question of the session. Okay. Hello. Yeah. I see that uh, you have mentioned here the deep learning. Is it deep learning that you have mentioned? In the yeah, title? Uh, yeah, because the neural network is a type of the deep learning. Oh, see, when your hidden layers are increasing more than three, okay, or more than one or like that, when then only we should call that network as a deep network. Are okay. You it is a very simple neural network that you have used, basically. And uh, most important point here is that whatever uh, the curve, uh, error curve that has been reducing the error from uh, some higher value to the lower value, the number of uh, epochs and that value, uh, the error is becoming zero almost. Right? Uh, sorry, but really I didn't hear you well. So... I am asking you regarding the error curve, how in how many epochs, epochs, that error is coming iteration we 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 we, we, we talk about uh, the iterations iterations right iterations How yeah many iterations? For, we for the first model uh after uh 106 uh 1006 uh 600 but uh in after like i say that the most the the most uh accurate accurate one is the this the fourth model and we have uh, after just after uh, 700 iterations right we okay. found this results this results so yes. the fourth model which uh, fourth model is having uh, it is coming to the lowest error with less number of iterations right yeah right okay professor chakchai Okay, uh, thank you. I think similar to the Professor Narendra, I'm a little bit confused. This is the deep learning or neural network. Um, uh, uh, right? Okay, fine. But even the, the neural network, so, so can you just uh, 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 answer why you select these neural networks other than other? AI techniques or any other machine learning techniques. Sorry, but you say that then I just heard neural network and the machine learning, but I don't understand what you say in the middle. Sorry. So why you select the neural network for your uh, own purpose? Why I choose? You say why I choose? Yes. Yeah. Yeah, uh, because uh, if you know that if um, I don't know if you have any information about the production line or about the problems in the in the production lines, but they are really they are any a relation between one the, between the pro the the failures number one and the failures between two. So because uh, because of that, I don't I didn't choose any any supervised or in or in supervised uh, machine learning. Because I don't have uh, I I don't have a model that I should uh, I should to follow it. 
and the and the principle and the 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 objective of uh, the aims of the my uh, my article is is founded a correlation model between uh, between different between different types of failure and in the results with they, they they don't we have we have we have not we have any any notes of uh, of uh, relation between between for example the fault the okay i going to return to this uh, to this slide because we really we, did, we didn't have any information or any relation between the for example the six uh, the cause number 6 and the code number uh, 21 just just the the system should uh, learn to how to uh, how, I don't know if I understand what I see, what I say. Uh, no. I say to you uh, that being why I choose the neural networks because uh, and I didn't change, I didn't choose any other uh, super other model of the machine learning because in this the case in my case study I didn't have any relation between the any, any relation in the mathematic model between the failures and the causes. So other machine learning can do. I mean, can support you. Also, okay. 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 Go ahead. Go ahead. Go ahead. Uh, also, for the also for the the literature, the literature is the I, I I found that the most model of the prediction is based on the on the neural networks. Okay. Fine. Hmm. And can what what is your uh, uh, precision uh, of this model? Sorry, what? What is your accuracy of this model? The testing accuracy and the training accuracy. If you can write, because really I didn't hear you. Uh, so what I'm is so your sorry. accuracy of this model? Uh, accuracy okay uh, in the in the neural network uh, if we have if we found the results uh, results the, the error value, value is equal to uh, 10 squared minus 7 so it's uh, we can validate our uh, your model and if you know, if you see uh, in the uh, in the figure number 6 i i found the i found this uh, this this uh, number, this value. Okay, uh, no question for me. Okay, thank you. Thank you so much. I sincerely thank our author for the excellent presentation contribution in this session and all our participants for being a part of international conference. I hope this session was informative enough. B, on behalf of the whole team, thank you for the support during the seventh version of the uh, seventh version and all the previous six version of the conference. We will be happy to have you in the eighth version in 2024. All the participants would be getting their digital certificates through email within two working days. Further, all the papers have already forwarded to Springer. The publication will be live within six months. Finally, co cooperate with the team of World S4 2023. Would you be so kind to offer some remarks to your Professor Akshay So and Professor Narendra Londe to enrich our session? Thank you, Ayush. Uh, thank you, everyone, for attending this session.
your participation is uh, highly appreciated uh, i wish you all the success and i thank professor chakchay also to i'm really happy to share a dais with you today sir thank you so much okay i think thank you sir ayush and the uh, conference and in particular the professor narendra and i think we have a uh, good uh, presentations and hope all of you and the participants uh, are doing a good job and hopefully you can submit uh, the paper again this is next year world well, is for again and hope to see you all again uh, next year thank you thank you sir i also thank both the uh, session chair for sharing this session a token of appreciation for the chair on the behalf of whole team world is food 2023 and global knowledge research foundation and partners thank you for your valuable presence dear all i request you all to switch on the switch on all your cameras so we have a quick snapshot Thank you so much. Thank you.